We're in Paris again for this daily drawing exercise. I think this is the police prefecture or something to do with the police anyway. I'm sure someone can kindly tell us in a comment. A very prominent building on the bank of the Seine, just near Notre Dame, just really across the road from Notre Dame. This, this tower stands out all over Paris. So while it's not really a simple illustration to do in 10 minutes. In fact, it, it took me to do all of it uh, just over 20 minutes. But I'll show the first 10 minutes in real time and then we'll speed up the second half of it into four times drawing speed. But if you do want to see it slower, you can use the cog icon to slow it down to half speed. So that way you'll be seeing it at double speed. But a reasonable amount of that time was taken on that rather large tree effect. That explains some of it. I'm using a 0.1 millimeter Copic multiliner on 210 GSM drawing cartridge paper. So I'm trying to get the proportions of this tower. It's a boxy sort of shape from where I'm drawing it up so far. It's, it's not square, but it's not a long rectangle either. And I'm wanting to create the right sort of spaces to put these windows on either side of the half tower, half round tower that comes out in the center. And I'm wanting to keep everything lined up as well. This is going to be a fairly loose, a fairly sort of casual lined drawing because I don't have time to be too precise, to be too geometric looking with it. If I'm going to have any chance of drawing a reasonable amount in 10 minutes, which is still my aim. I'm hoping to basically get the tower done and something of the surrounds. So we'll see how far I get. And so now I do this section, round section. I realize I've th thinned the tower too much. So I do an extra line to thicken it. And that extra line that now is there on the right hand side of the tower, I don't think it's noticeable at all at the end by the time I put the other detail into this tower and do the rest of the drawing. And this is why I say we shouldn't worry, we shouldn't fret too much about incorrect lines, lines that aren't quite in the right place, but put the correct line in because overall it will have far less impact to then have the correct line with the incorrect line close to it than to leave the incorrect line, which will make the whole thing look not quite right. And so I'm aligning the top section. Now, this is probably the most significant. Hmm, someone started using a chainsaw across the road, if you can hear that. This is probably the biggest uh, blunder, is probably the right word I make. I did that, that initial dot, which really was representing the top of the, the little upright decorative element. But then when I draw in this tower, I use that as the base of that decorative um, wrought iron on top instead of the top. And so that means I've poked up the actual roofing too high. So where I've got that little cross piece, that should have been the top of these two bits I've just drawn, if you can follow what I'm saying. So my tower is going to be too tall and too pointy. Fortunately, I didn't see it at this stage. I didn't realize I was too focused on getting that done and moving on to the next part in the time. If I had realized how thin and pointy it was, I probably would have felt obliged to start again. So that's the sort of mistake we want to try not to make, where it's not so much a mistake in our actual drawing it's a mistake simply in our, not even our observation, because I, I saw where it was when I was observing. But somehow in my thinking, I just 
then mistook that point for another point. But again, 10 minute drawing, we're doing drawing exercises, we're not producing artworks. And I would suggest that it's important to really resist starting again, unless we make such a fundamental error that the drawings actually not going to be able to do. Sometimes we make an error where there's now not going to be room to put the details that we need to put in. That might be worth starting again for because we fundamentally can't um, work on all the, all the elements of the drawing if that's the case. But if one part of it such as this sticks up too high or not high enough or whatever, then that's the sort of thing we note when we look at the drawing afterwards and we try and work out, why did I do that? Can I remember? Why didn't I get this right? Did I not observe it carefully enough? Did I observe it carefully, but then I drew the line carelessly or simply inaccurately? Uh, what, what is the reason, if I can think of it, why? And again, the only reason to think through this is not to beat ourselves up, but to work out how we can be a little more cautious, careful, accurate the next time. Whether we need to just keep our attention span stronger or whether there's some other issue that we need to address. Being honest with how our drawings look afterwards is very, very helpful in improving our drawings. We can't we can't move past any mistakes or any bad drawing habits that we don't recognize and consciously work to improve upon. So I'm still going in my 10 minutes. You're still watching this actual time. It's more straightforward now, moving, moving down, because I have all my widths already worked out with the part that I've drawn at the moment. And so I can now just follow down. I was working hard not to see this face, the two eyes and the mouth in this section. And now reserving some of the tree space. Now I didn't get this angle particularly correct. I was hoping it would be hidden later on, but it wasn't hidden as much as I would have liked. And so now it's time to try and do some of the rest of this before my 10 minutes is totally up. So I really am defining the windows by the shadows. I'm not drawing all the things we can see. What is important, I think, with a drawing such as this is that we Work hard not to let the windows become too large. Again, this is where when we draw detail, especially when we're drawing on a relatively small scale, it's very easy for the detail to end up being too large. So we do want to try and avoid that at all possible. And I realized I hadn't put all the detail on this tall pitched tower roof. So I just add some of that and there's even a bit more detail that I realize I haven't done. I haven't done the other side of this tower. Now there's not much of it that we can see, but we can see a bit of it and it's good to put it on. Sometimes when we have a, a tower such as this, besides making it too tall, the challenge can be, um, but when I say like this, I mean, off center, but not hugely off center. So we're not seeing it angle on. It's just a little bit off center, which means one side is almost symmetrical and another side is almost not visible. And yet it's enough to make the whole thing asymmetrical. And it's enough that if we don't do the line for the edge that we can only just see, it visually looks not quite right. So these, these subtle variations in angle are often the hardest to capture. Even though at a glance, it might look relatively simple compared to a 45 degree angle on. So I'm 
certainly not trying to draw the detail down this side. I'm just trying to do enough vertical lines at the right perspective to have it look reasonable, a reasonable sort of visual capture of the effect. This is particularly these severely foreshortened facades of buildings are particularly where drawing the effect of detail makes it quite possible to do. We're almost about to start quadruple time and here we go again with these dormer windows in groups of three very much trying to capture the effect not draw the detail and then this tower on the end and I'm hoping that the gap between the two is okay the gap between the two towers is not too too wide and then we have we have a tower on the other corner, which is actually angled at 45 degrees to the corner. And now I decide to do the rest of the facade before I get overly bogged down on the foliage. And I do switch to a 0 0.3 millimeter pen for the foliage just to get a darker effect more quickly and if you're finding this helpful if you're finding this series helpful then please help me out and hit the like button and let me know in the comments whether you're doing these and that will encourage me to produce more of them and fortunately this side wall is relatively straightforward to do certainly compared to some of the other things I've done. Now, in the distance, we can see one of the towers of Notre Dame peeking up above the roof and to the left of the tower. And there is something of the other tower of Notre Dame that we can see on the other side of our tower here. But I've decided not to draw it for the sake of clarity and for the sake of time. But if we were doing a more considered drawing, I would certainly include Notre Dame because it's part of the, the streetscape. However, I probably would use a lighter pen again, a 0 0.05, if I could find one. I don't usually draw with that. I find it a bit fine. But I would want to certainly get a lighter line, a lighter effect than I've had with the 0.1 just to help the, the Notre Dame sit way back and not be confused with being part of this building. It would be very important too with doing those Notre Dame towers not to try and draw too much of the detail at all, to really super simplify it with the marks that we put. And that's it. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Well, as I just madly finish this foliage with a bit of extra value, I hope you're encouraged to give this a go. And of course, you'll find the reference for this drawing on my channel community page. So why not have a look and have a draw? But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, however long it takes you to do a 10 minute drawing, whether it's 10 or 20 minutes, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.